about two minutes away from the end of the trading day. Scarlett Fuish and Ali Basak here with you and here to help you take, help us take you through the closing bell is a global simulcast, Carol Masser and Tim Stenovic. Uh, welcome to our Bloomberg Radio and YouTube audiences in addition to our Bloomberg Television audiences. Carol, uh, down, down, down mm -hmm. on the day. The Russell 2000 now joining uh, the S&P and the Nasdaq and falling more than 2%. So at least in equities, it's hard to find a place to hide today. Yeah, that's really fair. And I think it's been interesting just to watch the last few minutes of trading taking another leg down. So pretty much uh, at our worst levels of the session. Having said that, you know, some of the safer plays like utilities, you are seeing some gains. You can see uh, kind of the tone among investors and where they want to kind of hide in this market. Um, but not, you know. We got a little bit of green out there. Yeah, a little bit of green. And it was interesting because we saw the Russell or uh, green earlier in the session. But like you said, Scarlett, it's not just a rotation like we saw, you know, in recent trading days where a sell off in mega cap tech moves into smaller companies. No, everything across the indices is lower today. Certainly, Shanali, the um, two mega cap tech companies that we heard from yesterday, two of the seven magnificent seven Tesla and Nvidia, uh, Tesla and Google, excuse me, um, not necessarily sending a great signal or tone, at least at the start of this earnings season. Listen, the reason the sell off is painful is because you had a lot of investors hiding out in so few names. And you have to wonder with the sell off that they're seeing like today, what does a dry powder look like to reinvest to be a part of that rotation trade? You have to bet on that cash on the sidelines to get into it. Or do you wait and see how this all shakes out before you commit uh, new money to new positions, right? Uh, the, you hear the closing bells right now. We're about nine seconds away from the end of the trading day, and we are looking like we're going to close at our session lows, Carol. Uh, the S&P 500 uh, down about 2.3 percent on the day. The Dow Industrial is losing one and a quarter percent. The Nasdaq, the worst of the bunch, losing more than three and a half percent. Again, these are the biggest declines since late 2022. And the Russell 2000 not escaping either, also closing at its session lows off by 2.1 percent. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, as we said, uh, a little bit of a leg down towards these last few minutes and just bouncing off of it. Having said that, Scarlett, if I look at the S&P 500, yep, most names are lower, folks, 337 to be exact. But we did see 166 names actually higher in the S&P 500 today. So not everything was completely down, but certainly the majority of the names. The majority of the names are certainly down, but you look at the IMAP, uh, which breaks down the S&P 500 into 11 main sectors, and the sectors that are higher, utilities, up by more than 1%, 1.2% gain. Of course, one of the smallest sectors in the index, right? Healthcare gaining 8 tenths of 1%. These are the dividend payers, the reliable companies. Uh, energy up by 2 tenths of 1%. And staples basically unchanged, but tech is the big loser on the day, off by more than 4%. All right, so let's get to some of the individual gainers. We just talked with uh, Mattel CEO Enon Kreis. Uh, they had a banner day, certainly one for the Bulls, up almost 10% in today's session, rallying on heavy volume. Uh, the company reported second quarter adjusted EPS that came in ahead of estimates. Analysts were positive on the results, highlighting the company's gross margin performance, which Morgan Stanley said had remained impressive. We know on Monday there was a report that Mattel had received a takeover approach from L. Catterton, the uh, PE firm backed by LVMH. We pressed the CEO. Uh, said that they still believe the best shareholder value is going it alone. So anyway, Mattel is standout. Enphase Energy, folks, uh, number one gainer in the S&P 500, up almost 13% in today's session. Uh, maker, of course, of solar equipment, uh, reported second quarter gross margin higher than estimates. Truist Security said third quarter guidance, while below consensus estimates, should give investors some confidence. So go figure. CoStar Group, also an outperformer, at its highs up 9% in today's session, finishing the day with a gain of just shy of 2%. It was among uh, some of the top gainers uh, in the S&P and uh, NASDAQ 100, again, on heavy volume. It's a real estate information and analytics company, services company, reported EPS above estimates and sales in line with estimates. Forecast for sales profit did miss estimates, and analysts did lower price targets. But nonetheless, investors found some... Uh, reasons to buy. And so you did see a couple of names certainly fundamentally driven or earnings driven in today's session. Okay, right? people were buying those stocks, Carol. People were, well, I guess everyone's buying and selling all the time, but <laughs> the selling pressure was on yeah. for uh, these other ones. I want to start with Tesla. Shares falling more than 12% today, the biggest drop since September of 2020. Uh, this after the company reported another quarter of disappointing profit and postponed that highly anticipated unveiling of autonomous taxis. 
uh, the volatile stock plunging the most in almost six months. Um, shares, again, dropping the most since September of 2020. And then also a huge decliner when it comes to weighing on the NASDAQ 100, the NASDAQ Composite, and the S&P 500 is the parent company of Google, that is Alphabet. Shares fell after the company spent more, resource, more resources into its drive to outmatch rivals in AI, fueling spending higher than analysts expected. CapEx spending came in higher than analysts thought it would. They thought it would be at 12.2 billion. It came in at 13. $0.2 billion. And then YouTube revenue also came in below what analysts had estimated. Google shares finishing the day down by more than 5%, Alphabet, I should say. Uh, NVIDIA shares fell after Elon Musk said on Tesla's earnings call yesterday that Tesla will, quote, double down on its Dojo supercomputer project because of high demand for those NVIDIA chips. Elon Musk said he's concerned about being able to get an adequate supply of NVIDIA chips and that Dojo can be competitive with NVIDIA. Shares in NVIDIA dropping more than 6% today. And finally, let's talk potatoes. Lamb Weston down more than 28%. Its biggest single day decline on record. This after the company reported adjusted earnings per share and EBITDA for the fourth quarter that missed the average analyst estimate. Profit guidance for fiscal 2025 is also below con consensus. You had a handful of analysts come out, including Vital Knowledge, who called the earnings report and guidance, quote, Disastrous. You know, Janala made a really, really good point, which is how much of that is tied to Ozempic and people not wanting to mm. uh, eat French fries right now potato, as potato. they try to lose weight. <laughs> you always have to eat French fries. I'm just going to put it out there. You know, if you're worried about the consumer, there was another place that there was a haven bid today, guys, and that was the bond market. Let's take a look at yields and how they've performed because the two-year uh, really saw a significant decline. That was off the heels this morning, of course. Uh, Bill Dudley, formerly of the New York Fed here, speaking about the idea of a rate cut needed as early as next week at next week's FOMC meeting. Uh, driving deal yields much lower in the short end of the curve. You did not see the same at the long end. You saw yields higher as you went along. Five-year, ten-year, five years flat. But 10-year was three basis points higher, 20-year, uh, five basis points. That bear steepener in full effect. All right, folks, we do have some earnings crossing. Just got one headline so far in terms of Ford. Ford second quarter adjusted EPS coming in at 47 cents a share. That looks like it is 20 cents hmm. light. We know Ford, uh, very interesting as we see, you know, um, General Motors, you know, some concerns about the EV space. We did see GM uh, boosting its profit outlook for the year. So we're waiting for some outlook uh, from Ford Motor. And we're looking at Ford right now down about 2% here in the aftermarket. Yeah, we're going to be joined by Steve Mann from Bloomberg Intelligence in just a few minutes on our program going through these results. Still only have one headline. Second quarter adjusted earnings per share coming in 20 cents below estimates, 47 cents versus estimates of 67 cents. It's not seeing the stock move too much in the after hours. I guess I spoke too soon because now it's down 2.3%. But Carol mentioned the context of what we heard from GM yesterday. So certainly looking out for investments in the traditional auto business, the ICE business, versus what's going on when it comes to progress in EVs. Okay, we also have a headline here on its outlook. Ford still sees mm -hmm. full year adjusted EBIT of 10 billion to 12 billion. Uh, analysts were looking for 11.23 billion. So the midpoint of that range is slightly below uh, what analysts were anticipating. But the press release makes it clear that Ford is on track for 2024 profitability. It also raises its cash flow outlook. I don't have the details on the cash flow outlook, but uh, it goes back to that idea of uh, what you were saying, um, Tim, about the ICE business doing much better than um, the EV side. Listen, you're bringing in $47.8 billion of second quarter revenue, Ford is saying here as well. Yeah. And remember, adjusted revenue, revenue was uh, supposed to be about $44 billion. The EPS was a significant miss, though, as we were saying, $0.20. Cents. And, and just take a look at that stock dropping now more than 6% after hours. So really feeling that earnings miss in particular. We will be speaking to Ford a little bit later in this show as well uh, to talk a little bit more about these transitions. You mentioned the free cash flow. So as you said, expectations for full year 2024 adjusted EBIT unchanged at 10 to 12 billion. Adjusted free cash flow outlook raised $1 billion to between 7.5 billion and 8.5 billion. So just looking at the press release uh, as uh, it is crossing. Okay, so so two different segments, Ford Blue and Ford Model E. Ford Blue revenue, the traditional business coming in above estimates at $26.7 billion for the second quarter versus estimates of $25.63 billion. Ford Model E revenue, that's the new 
electric business coming in at 1.1 billion. That was below estimates of 1.31 billion dollars. Okay. Ford shares down seven and a half percent right now. More yeah. than seven and a half. Let's wow. also give you the outlook for Ford Pro, which is uh, its business that covers commercial fleet vehicles as well as services for the full year. Uh, Ford Pro EBIT of nine billion to ten billion is the forecast. Uh, it had seen previously eight billion to nine billion, so that is an increase uh, in its guidance for the Ford uh, Pro business, which of course is less significant than. Uh, or than the Ford Blue business, which has done well. All right, quick headline, guys. IBM crossing second quarter revenue. That is $15.77 billion versus an estimate of $15.61 billion. So just uh, a little bit to the upside, and you've got just a quick reaction in IBM shares in the aftermarket, up 2.1%. All right, guys, we're going to continue to watch more earnings to come. That is a wrap. Our cross-platform coverage, radio, TV, YouTube. We call it the closing bell. We'll see you again, same time, same place, tomorrow.